friends, it's Michelle. Welcome to my channel and um, welcome to a project that I have really, really been thinking about for probably going on almost two years. And I'm finally getting off my duff and doing it. I have also thought about adding to my channel a new or new episode called Mailbag Monday. And what I was thinking is that would be a great opportunity to either show happy mail or talk about happy mail in some way or make something for happy mail. And this particular thing I think is going to be a mail folio. So the idea comes from the fact that I recycle a lot of books for projects and I have a lot of book jackets. I think, you know, this is not something that I think we all have a lot of book jackets and I don't want to throw them away. A lot of times they're coated. A lot of times they're a little bit damaged and I kind of have bundles of these hanging around and I've thought wouldn't they make great little projects and I'm finally going to just make one and see how it comes out. So my thought is I'm going to take this little field guide folio. I have not planned this out at all. As you can see it's very damaged and I'm going to turn it into an adorable little mailer for Happy Mail. And let's see if we can get this done in less than an hour front to back. So I've just done a couple things. I've picked out an old, not an old, but just, you know, a file folder. I get these all the time at estate sales. It just suddenly got dark in here. So let me put on the light. There we go. Um, I get these a lot from estate sales and I'm going to use this. I have my, obviously my book jacket, a little piece of cloth might be handy. And then I picked out some book pages, and uh, not book pages, scrapbook paper that I thought might be interesting. So let's dive right in. So the first thing I have to do is cut the metal piece out of this uh, file folder. And, you know, I, I don't measure much. I kind of, especially in projects like this, I find it just more relaxing to just kind of make as I go. So I'm simply going to measure the book jacket next to the uh, file folder and cut. Even though this is a legal sized folder I'm working with, it's not going to be long enough to line the whole inside of the book jacket. And I have to decide which side of the flaps, which flap I'm going to keep as an organizational piece, you know, for things to like stick in and which one I'm going to use as a pocket. And then once I decide that, I can measure the length. And now that I know the size, I can just lay it on top of the folder and cut it to size. I don't think it's necessary to measure as each book jacket will be different. And if it has a tatty edge like this, you just do the best you can. So I guess the question is, do I want to have a pocket over here or over here? I think over here is what I'm leaning towards because I could shorten this just a touch and it would look fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this piece of file folder and I am going to glue it in here so that it gives really good support to this book jacket. And I guess the question would be, which color do I like the best? I think I like the green size the best. And I suppose I should score it before I do this so that I don't have any problems. So I don't have any problems um, folding it. So I'm just going to make a little, little notation with my pen where it should be scored. The thing is, is that I don't really, let's see. I only really need it to bend in one in one place. Probably need it to bend right in the middle of this spine. So let me just make a, a notation of where that is. So I have this, I made a little note there with my pen. And I folded it right here. So I'll make a little notation there. And then this will be a pocket, so it won't much matter. So we'll fold 
there. And then this will fold here. Okay. So now I'm going to glue it down, but I'm only going to glue it piece by piece because I don't want, I want this all to fold and lay flat where it should. You got to do it in little pieces if you want it to line up and not buckle, if that makes sense. So I'm going to glue this piece down first. Just like this. See, that folds really nice. Now I'm going to glue the second piece. This is going to give a lot of support to this folio because the book jacket is very thin and very old and honestly doesn't have a lot of structure. Now let's fold that, make sure that folds well. Look at this little piece is a little wonky. So we gotta make sure that's gonna all glue down. And then we're gonna get lots of glue on this. And then that will fold in here. So I think what I will do is put a little bit of file folder over here just to make sure that this is um, supported. Like that. And I'll trim it after it's on. I don't do a lot of precise measuring. If you are new to my channel, I just like to create as I go. I'm not one to overthink things or I try not to overthink things. I try to make things sort of easy and fun and I feel like creating is about just being free. So I, 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 I don't get hung up in a lot of the measurements. Okay, so now that folds well. I'm happy with that. It's not quite in the middle. As you can see, there's a little lip here. But again, this is just a folio. This is something you're mailing a friend. So I'm not going to get too hung up about it. I am, however, going to trim this a bit because I feel like I want it to be... I don't have a problem with the little bit of the brown hanging off. In fact, I kind of like how that looks. But I just want it to be, you know, somewhat straight. And I am going to... I'm not sure I want to keep... This is where I thought I would put the fabric. I thought maybe that might look good here and here. So what I will probably do is rip it. And then I want to fray it a little bit. We want it to look a little bit tatty. All right, so I'm going to ink it. Now the question is, will we want it to come in here at all? I might want to hang something off of that. So I think what I'll do is take my fabric tack glue and put some glue down, wipe it and smooth it out, and then stick the cloth down. And I want, I think, this to hang over. So I will... I'm gonna place it on, I guess one side is tattier than the other. So inside, this is going to be a pocket. I'm gonna trim this.
And I don't know if you can see, even though it's on some really strong folder, this is still very delicate. So I want to firm that up with something. I'll probably use some washi tape. Let's see, which ones do I have available? That one kind of goes well. So the nice thing about the washi tape is it not only offers a nice design element, making it more pleasing to the eye, but also really helps that seam, not frame, gives a little bit of structure to that old jacket. It doesn't look too straight there. So let's add another little, another little piece. looks pretty nice there. I think I'm going to put some stitching here and here just to make it look a little bit more handmade and I'm gonna take a little bit off of this edge just so that the pocket's a little bit shorter and more manageable so that when this folds over there's I can put things in a little bit better. So now I'm just gonna take the trimmer and take a little bit of that edge off. I don't want my pocket to be quite so deep. I wanna be, the, I want the flexibility of being able to slide things in uh, easily, and this will be able to do this. And, you know, strangely enough, there was just a little bit of damage up at the top there, and I wanna hide that. So I'm just gonna like make a little tiny, I don't even wanna call it a collage. I'm just kind of putting some ripped paper um, in the corner just to sort of add to the, to the look because this is an altered jacket. And I really like this piece of scrapbook paper. It has red birds on it and I like the repetition of the pattern. It reminds me a little bit of cloth. So I'm just going to fold and measure and I could cover the entire thing but I decide not to because I kind of like the idea of the green um, flap that folds in and out not having the pattern on it. You'll see why later. I just, I don't like everything matchy match. I like to have a nice cohesive look to something, but I don't need it to be always symmetrical. In fact, I, I'm not really a symmetrical person uh, per se. And hopefully the person receiving this, and you know who you are, doesn't mind that. Um, I think she's free-flowing enough that she will enjoy the, the layout. Now the final thing to do is put the thumb notch in, which just finishes off the pocket. And then all I have left is to put the stitching on the top and the bottom. So I put some stitches here and here, obviously, to make the pocket. But then I also put stitching across. Let's see if I can I put stitching across here and around here, which I think looks, just makes it look a little bit more finished. This flap can still come down here if I decide to do something with that. This one I am not going to use, so I might as well cut it off. folds good and I love the little birds and the green there and the red I think it really looks nice and then in here I'm going to make some little organizers and I'm going to put that little piece of this piece I think will look really cute as like if I have like an envelope there like for instance an envelope like this, if it was covered right here, would look very cute. Or up here, and then down here could be a little pocket. So I'm just going to cover the envelope with the scrapbook paper, and I think the flap needs to be trimmed. So you could see the little bird a little bit more. Or maybe I would cut it so the bird would be more centered. 
And now I'm going to take that same washi tape that I used on the fold and I'm going to cover the little flap of the envelope. I like using materials, um, similar materials throughout a project, even if it's not uh, symmetrical because it just makes it cohesive. It just brings it all together, that repetition of patterns and colors. This will strengthen the flap and just give it a little extra finished look to it. Okay. So now I decide I want to have a little like pull on the, like not a pull, but a little tab on, on the envelope. So I'm going to take uh, a ticket sticker and I'm going to fold it over. And this is just going to give the little envelope a little, a little finished look. And like I said, I'm going to cut the scrap of paper so that the bird is fully visible. It's not um, covered by um, the, the flap or the ticket and, I think I want it, I want the bird to be fully visible on the envelope. So hopefully that all makes sense. By covering the envelope in scrapbook paper, a ticket, and a little bit of washi, it just makes it look more finished and uh, gives it a really sweet look that complements uh, the right-hand side of the piece. I'm inking it just to make sure that some of that yellow mustard yellow paper doesn't really show through too much. And now I am ready to work on the pocket. So the scrapbook paper is pretty light. I don't want that to be the pocket in itself because it's not going to be sturdy enough to um, hold up to things going in and out. So I'm just taking a piece of the file folder and I'm just measuring it and going to actually use like the little score already built in to just sort of give integrity to the pocket. And instead of fully covering it, I'm going to just cover a piece of it with the scrapbook paper, almost like a, a little washi piece, um, rather than rather than completely covering it. I like a little bit of that file folder sticking up. So now it's time to glue down the, the flap. And I'm only going to glue down the little bottom piece there. Um, because I am going to sew both sides of this little pocket to make it strong. So I really only need that bottom to be glued in well. And then I'm going to glue in the pocket, but I'm only going to put a bead of glue around the outside because that way I can use the pocket itself, the little envelope itself, as another additional tuck spot. So I'm just going to stick that on there. The whole goal of a mail folio is giving you lots of places to tuck things. And I think I want one more tuck spot. I think I want a corner tuck spot on that um, pocket to the right. Uh, I want one little place, more place that I can put some giftable paper. So I really like this orangey red floral. I think it complements the red bird a lot and I like the floral piece so I'm just going to cut a corner off so I can make a corner tuck spot. One of the biggest mistakes I made as a beginner was making my corner tuck spots exactly the same size as the corner and then just gluing them on with a bead of glue. There's nothing per se wrong with that but the problem is it doesn't give you much space to put things inside and it can sometimes pop the corner tuck off of you know, whatever you're gluing it to. So by adding a little extra space and scoring it, you make your pocket um, bigger, not bigger inside, and it gives it more strength on the corner of that piece. You're able to put things inside of it easily, and it doesn't put strain on the glue, and it's just worth the little extra effort that you see me doing here. So let's look at the basic construction of this piece. It was super simple to put together. And with a, a, a male folio, what you're really concentrating on is just a structure that you can put all your goodies on. So I can clip a letter right here in the middle. I can tuck things in here, tuck things in there, tuck things in here, tuck things in here clip something to here if I want. We'll have to decide about that. And then this is the outside. So the only things I have left to do, essentially, 
or maybe add some little pretty little things to the front here. Um, not quite sure what that would be yet because I really like the fact that it looks like a book. That's kind of the whole point of it. Um, and then inside this folds out and this so the thing is is that even something here could be clipped so that's what I have to decide a lot of it depends actually a little paper clip could just come across here and put some things on this side. So it really is just the, the basic structure with places to put things that you're, you're really thinking about. I could even fold it over this way as well. I actually could put a tab here with an elastic and that would hold it closed. So maybe that's what I'm gonna wanna do. So now that I've talked out the process to myself and I know what I'm going to do, um, let's put the finishing touches on this project. I am using a whale's tail um, punch, which I got from my wonderful friend, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. Um, just as the tab that's going to stick out, I'm going to use my favorite punch set and I'm going to punch a hole in that tab and put an eyelet in there as well for strength and that's going to be um, the element that holds the elastic on my folio and allows me to close it. Closure is important because uh, basically you, you're going to be stuffing it with goodies. You, you don't want those goodies to fall out. So you want to make sure that you have something that is going to hold the whole piece together. So that's what you're seeing me do right now. I know there are a lot of people out there that make um, sort of mail folios and happy mail things that are standard to them that every time they do it the same way a pocket or a folder but honestly if i have the time i really like to make original pieces that i will never make again i mean i'll use a book jacket again but this particular one is a one-off right i'm all for efficiency for sure but when i have the time i like to put the extra effort in um, for people who are so generous to me and now that it's all tied and working the way it should, I'm very excited to start stuffing this puppy. I think we are ready. So I've gathered a bunch of pieces and parts that I wanna stuff it with. And right before I decided to stuff it, I kind of thought the, the cloth binding looked a little boring. So I took out my black um, permanent ink pad and some rubber stamps, and I'm just adding some details um, they won't probably even be that noticeable, but I just really think they give it a little extra touch. And I threw in a belly band there too at the end. See, it's, it's if left to my own devices, I just keep going. So let's wrap this up. So here we are with our basic design using a old book cover um, and some basic supplies. We have a very sturdy and fun folio that took no time to put together. Um, we have a pocket and a pocket, a little tuck spot and an envelope, a little textile that I can put something on. And then I did put a belly band in off camera. I, I forgot to turn the camera on, but it's just a simple belly band and took some black ink and just stamped some, you know, writing and just a little bit of graphics on there. So now it's the stuffing part, which is my favorite. So I'm going to first do the belly band. And I have these, I want to keep this, because this is a uh, field guide and it's birds, I think that's going to be the theme to my mailer this, this time. I think it's going to be birds and nature-y types of things. So I have this kind, these two vintage postcards with a deer and a rabbit on it. I think they're super cute. And I have this really pretty postcard that is not vintage, but has a beautiful botanical on it. And I have a Tim Holtz bluebird. And I think those would look very cute right here. I'm going to take this bird paper clip, stick it on there like so, and slip that in here. I also think it would look really cute if I layered in a little extra element. So I'm gonna put some buttons in there. And I think that is just a really cute 
layered layered um, page. Now I'm going to flip this open. I have these really pretty little pieces of, pa of paper that have like really cute things in the corner, botanicals. I'm going to stick those there. I have these three pretty vellum pieces. I'm going to stick those here. Oh, another piece of paper. And then I want to layer this a little bit. So I'm going to take this little fussy cut of a bird in the front and a fussy cut of the bird in the back and just kind of stick him out. That's really cute. I found these two little bird charms and I put them on different types of pins. And I'm going to pin them on the little edge of this textile so that my pen pal will then have, can either stick them on a project like this or she can take them off of pins and put them on a thread or something else for a project of her choice. So I think that's really cute. It gives another little tiny element that I think is very sweet um, to our, our piece. So now I have this larger piece and I have some of these bigger things I can use. Um, I, th I have these two photographs and my pen pal is a photographer. These were not taken by me. I actually bought these at an estate sale of a, of a professional photographer. I think she'll appreciate them. So I'm going to stick them in the pocket there. Um, and then I have this really pretty red and green, which I think just goes really good with this. And I have this sweet postcard um, with a officer and his gal, and I, I just love that. So I'm gonna put that, stack that there. Uh, let's see what else I'll stack on there. I made this slide with dandelion seeds. I think that would look quite pretty there. Um, maybe I'll put this little doily behind it. And of course, because it's birds, I want to make sure that birds are highlighted. So I think I will put a couple birds right at the top there and clip that in with a paper clip, just like that. And I think that looks really nice. I have some playing cards that I will stick right there. A little package of stamps that I will stick in this envelope like that. I'll put a little playing card here too. And I'm going to put a few little birds sticking out of this little tuck spot. And I have this little bouquet of flowers as well. And last but not least, have this really neat piece that I can just stow in here. And the only thing that will be missing will be my letter for my pen pal, which I can write and then um, stow in this pocket as well. Keep that down. I think that's really cute. It's a great little organizer. I have things in here, here, two pins, some things here, then this beautiful layer here. And then it closes up just like that. I could stick one other little piece here since there's something, since I have uh, a clip here, maybe what I will do is make a, a tag that has a bird on it and stick that under there. So here it is the next day. I'm about to put it in the mail. I just wanted to show you the tag that I ended up collaging to put on the front so that there was something to put under that clip and just a little something for my pen pal to use um, in her own journaling or as a bookmark. I added a couple more fussy cuts um, to the little package and it pretty much is how I showed it, but the natural light and being outdoors, I think you can see the overall folio just a little bit better than you could on my dark um, studio desk. 
So I hope you enjoyed this uh, process video. I hope it gives you ideas of the types of things that you can put in a happy mail, things that you can make happy mail folios out of. We all have book jackets and envelopes and folders. And I hope you'll tune in again. Please press like below if you found anything valuable. Your participation really helps my channel and I really appreciate your time. Please comment below if you have any questions or if you'd like to share anything with your own experiences with Happy Mail. I will see you again on another episode of Mailbag Monday. Take care, everyone. Bye.